Okay, we're going to do something fun here. Not that all scenes aren't fun, but uh, this one could be potentially extra fun. Um, I keep mentioning and referencing them, but the, uh, the Facebook uh, Stampscapes 2 group... Um, I forgot who did it. One of you guys posted a... Uh, that photograph of that kind of that celestial kind of deep space imagery with a lot of the uh, really dark um, silhouette kind of objects and foliage um, in the foreground. So some other type of thing like a it's not really a worm's eye view, but um, just a view kind of looking upwards towards the uh, the heavens, the deep space, and whatnot, and there were dark images all the way around it, uh, encompassing it, kind of framing things off, so we're dealing with infinity and foreground, just in kind of a deep silhouette. I love that type of imagery. Um, it wasn't a photograph, it was some kind of composite, so I'm not going to try and replicate that photograph, but uh, I'll try to do something in the spirit of it, okay? Now I do have some deep space images, okay? I'm not going to use these kind of so much as a tr in the traditional way that I normally do where I might stamp something like this um, starbirth image out and retain a lot of the uh, kind of the specific areas where th there are light stars in here and whatnot but I'll just use this more as kind of like a texture because we're going to get really as layered as I possibly can um, in this piece in terms of my color usage and uh, this is just going to give me kind of a head start as far as some of that imagery might go okay now that's kind of using these um, stamps in terms of lighting quite a bit differently from how I normally do okay but you can see this image right here it has a lot of different stars in it and uh, this image right here was um, inspired by some of those really early um, Hubble telescope images that came back. And I think it was talking about kind of the birth of some young stars. Um, and uh, I've just found it incredibly beautiful. Um, I think I actually bought some kind of high-resolution prints at the time. It, at the time, it wasn't... Uh, you know, the digital photography wasn't out, but um, now this is the nebula with star. Um, it represents the tarantula nebula. If you if you're into astronomy and whatnot, um, it's my version of it. I took liberties with it, you know, but um, uh, that's what that is right there. It's kind of one of my boutique images. I say that because uh, <laughs> it's really a, a lot of these deep space images are kind of my, I don't know, they're my little, um, I don't know, personal types of images. I, I loved my astronomy classes when I was in the college and I've always been fascinated by kind of really deep space types of images. Um, I don't know, I find them really quite evocative and, and whatnot. And I just like the looks of them um, as far as like elements. They're, they're almost like kind of like abstractions or something like that. This is the cloud cumulus, and you can see I'm just kind of going in here and uh, filling in the surrounding area, okay? And this is all with the Prussian blue. I'm using a pretty dark blue because I plan on getting really quite dark in this piece. Um, I have no idea how it's going to be in the end result, but we'll see. Okay, but anyways, isn't that kind of fun? Just even that by itself is pretty cool without any kind of coloring. <laughs> and here I'm going to just plaster over it with all kinds of different colors and lose a lot of my forms. But, you know, that those images and that texture will be down there as my base um, coat. So it'll be really, um, oh, kind of buried um, within this um, composition right here. This is a half page piece of paper, by the way, eight and a half by five and a half. And uh, we'll see how this goes. 
Okay, so I've taken some of my tumbled glass right here, Distress Ink. I'm using a lot of this, too. And uh, over my last few scenes, not on this scene right here, but um, I really do like that color. I had a feeling that I would, because when I saw that, um, you know, the pad version of it and that kind of indexing that they had on it, I thought it was really nice. But anyway... Okay, so in here, I'm just going to start applying this color down, okay? And uh, it's going to go, I'm going for a lot of coverage, okay? Now this is one of those scenes where I have a concept in mind, a very loose concept, and uh, I don't have the process down because I'm just kind of coming out with it. It's you know I, it, it's not totally unlike things I've done before, but I'm just the amount of um, kind of lighting in here is going to be extremely minimal. You can see I've just really filled in a lot of areas right here. I'm leaving some of the things you know a little bit lighter just so I do have some contrast working in here, but I'm mostly going for you know, a really deep intensity. And I'm going to splatter paint it over, so I really want that, you know, those little stars that will um, result from that splatter painting um, to really show up. So I have to make the area, the foundation that I'm splattering it onto, fairly dark for all of that to show up. So it's going to be more about that in terms of the lighting than kind of light sources and reflected light, like things like the, uh, the clouds being illuminated or something like that. That's what it is in concept. We'll see what it comes out like uh, in the end result. I've been doing a lot of experiment, experimenting, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes you just got to do that, uh, as opposed to kind of going for you know really fantastic looking end results. You know, you got to kind of experiment around with things and and just try things. You know, it's really important to uh, kind of step out of our comfort zones. Um, uh, at times, you want to kind of refine certain things too. Okay, now this is, I'm using uh, a lot of Marvies on this one, which I always do anyways, but um, this one is going to be really important to me to go for um, some really super bright, intense colors on here because I really want this to really, you know, kind of. Uh, I don't know, kind of glow or something like that. In terms of the intensity, not in terms of the lighting. Okay. All right, so we don't have to use it exactly the same everywhere in terms of uh, the amount of ink applied. It's all kind of an abstraction. It's one of those things. We don't really have an up, you know, and a down or something like that. I mean, I kind of might decide later, but it's really one of those compositions that you know, really could be positioned any way you want. Okay, that was that. Let's go on to... Now, some of my most bright colors are things like magenta and uh, pink right here. These two from Marvy are really insane. And I don't know, if I go back in my videos, I don't know how many times I've used these, but it, it probably hasn't been too much um, just because it is so crazy uh, intense uh, at times. Okay. All right, my pad here. Well, I was going to say my pad is a little bit dry, but no, it isn't. I just didn't apply enough ink. Okay. Now I'm thinking about getting some variation in here. Okay, so I do want some blues to remain just blue. So let's just try to apply some of this pink here and there. You notice how it doesn't look pink. It's because pink is overlapping blue, right? And that's the combination for violet. So where there's a little bit more blue and then darker blue, it looks like a darker violet. There's no kind of set area or anything like that it's just when you start doing this just kind of you know, get a feel if you like it then add more you know here or there um, <laughs> if you don't like it 
you know, you can't really remove it, but you can do other things. You can kind of uh, bury that area in, you know, some other kind of uh, color, or you can make it darken it, or whatever. Okay, something like that. Okay. A little bit more over here. Ah, okay, sometimes how I can tell um, if I want to move on to my next color is kind of when I apply more of your existing color that you're already using. If it doesn't get any darker, you know, with additional coats, that's when you know you can really kind of move on. Or if you've maximized that existing color. In this case, I do want to maximize it. Um, just to get a little bit more of an intense kind of glow. All right, this is magenta right here. I love this color, but I hardly ever use it because it is just so crazy intense. I mean, look at this right here. Look how bright that is. Not that scenes have to represent a, kind of a natural looking color, but that one right there is pretty crazy intense. Now see, even putting this um, magenta over the top of all of that, you know, pretty dark blue in here, it's still so dominant a color that that almost reads just as, you know, pure magenta there. Even with all of that blue showing through it, it's just really, really intense. hardly ever have to re-ink <laughs> some of these colors just because I don't use them very much. But I do value them. This uh, magenta looks really fantastic, kind of in the perimeter area of warm tone scenes. So if you kind of work them through yellows, oranges, reds, and then you want to go kind of a really deep, saturated tone um, in there, magenta is really fantastic. Sometimes it's almost too hot so what I do is I add the magenta, and then I mellow it out with the, the color that I uh, often use to mellow out the intensity, and that's brown. So versions of brown over the top of like uh, purple or greens or something like that is a great way to just kind of, uh, kind of mellow things out and make them look a little bit more earthy, I guess. It's just adding that brown to it. Personally, I, I really like the uh, the Marvy number no. six brown, but um, a lot of the distress inks, there's some really fantastic tones within that range that would work really fantastic too. So look at those deep, really saturated tones. Okay. I'm kind of leaving this down here. I kind of like that kind of lighter area, but I do love that intensity right out there. See where it kind of goes over that? It's just pure magenta right there. But see that right there? I mean, I could have put, you know, just kind of applied some of those tones down there, but look at that depth in there right now. Look at that intense glow coming out from, you know, within that space you know, through the clouds, and, you know, we have that uh, star birth in there, and uh, they're starting to kind of, you know, develop some character, wouldn't you say, you know, by having some additional tones laid down on top of them, so, um, you know, they've kind of taken on their own kind of spirit, I would say. Look at that. Now, that's why I stamped them out, too in a pretty dark color, okay, to begin with, a dark value of blue, which was the Prussian, one of the darkest of all blues you'll ever find in the ink world. <laughs> there was a, I don't remember who it was, but one of these uh, clothing companies, um, mail order places, um, I remember one of their, uh, items, you know, that I was looking at, um, one of their colors, um, you know how companies kind of name something kind of a more enticing, you know, 
sounding name for something instead of light blue it might be you know uh, ice crystal blue or something I don't know whatever it is you know something like that but um, one of their colors for a really dark blue was um, uh, dark blue I think it was dark almost black blue <laughs> and I, I, I love that name I always remembered it for some reason Okay, this is violet right here, okay? And I don't know if you can tell, but um, I don't feel that, um, you know, I'm expertly applying this ink. But what I do, you know, is I just use in my applications on my scenes just to make it look, I don't know, um, really saturated if that's what I'm going for and deep and rich and whatever. I just use a lot of ink, you know. It isn't through some sort of a kind of expertise. I mean, I've certainly done it enough, but I'm almost going for more of a you know, uh, it's just kind of, uh, you know, just super layering, I guess you could say. And that really compensates for a lot. I mean, this right here isn't, you know, really modeled and uh, this is broken china right here, the Distress Ink. It's kind of a medium blue. I just wanted to see what that would look like around here. Let me see, was that the side that I used? Okay, now I think I use this side right here. Just seeing if it can get any um, darker, and uh, I can use some of this blue on the interior here. I want to get a little bit darker in there. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted not to. I'm kind of gonna going against my uh, my uh, my normal inclination, and it's you know I'm going much darker around here. So I just want to do get a big glob of that blue going in there. I want a little bit more of a kind of an internal glow in here and hopefully I can ch achieve that with additional ink. So again, it's just laying down a lot of ink in there or additional ink in this case. And you can get a lot of ink down just by using a, a bit of ring or fluid. Now, I don't always have those ringer fluids, okay? I was just, I don't know, I'm just kind of starting to use that more and more. Uh, just because I bought some new inks for the first time in a long time, so. Um, okay, but you see that nice intensity in there? It looks really dark, doesn't it? But let me show you a little trick. This is what I show people when uh, they, uh, I'm at a show or something like that at a convention and a lot of people love this cloud, but I, I want to show them how to maximize it, too. Okay, you know how normally we stamp something out and then we color it, right? And a lot of times, that's it. You don't just go back and re-stamp that same image. But this is what's something that I like to do with something like this, okay? I can see this clouds in some areas where I don't get too dark, but the areas that I got fairly dark with it This is not trying to make up for something that has happened. It's doing something to kind of enhance what's already down there. So it's not like, okay, now I can't see it anymore. I shouldn't have colored it. You, if you haven't stamped, if those weren't stamped in black, then I have um, kind of an extra notch in value that I can um, apply to this scene and to have it still show. It's going to be dark down there. It's not going to be light clouds or anything like that. But let's blot off some of the surrounding area just so it kind of fades off nicely. Let's stamp this in here and let's see what it can um, look like. I don't have to do this, okay? It's just, see that extra little touch right there? And look how much darker it is here. See, this looked really dark before, right? But look how dark that is. So let's add this in and add that extra little touch of kind of uh, 
image layering, I guess you can say. So it's almost like, it almost looks a little bit more three-dimensional that way. Before, I mean, it hopefully it looked like, you know, there was varied space within those images that I stamped down, but here we're actually using color. Lighter values of blue and darker ones. So it just, to me, it looks a lot more dimensional that way to do things like that. And I'll just go around the perimeter. Now, I always have this kind of, fo you know, facing inwards because this area in here, although it's not a bright light source, will end up being the light source, but it'll be lighter in the middle somewhere. So this is always being lit, kind of top lit, but this is one of those stamps where you can use it at any angle so that, you know, it can point towards that illumination that you have in there. It's going to be a little bit scary to uh, splatter paint this because I really like the look of that as is. But the show must go on and uh, not that we have to, we can't change, uh, you know, I don't know, direction. I do it all the time in my rambling, kind of uh, semi-incoherent uh, videos, but um, the ones that are kind of more exploratory for sure, I just, I, I really don't know which way they're going at times, and you know, one of the things I always say um, is to allow your pieces to kind of go in a direction that they seem to want to go in, even if it gets a little bit I don't know if they're 180 degrees from what you thought they would be going in, but I don't know, sometimes you just have to kind of change course. And uh, I don't know, isn't that kind of like a metaphor for life in some ways? You just, you have a set direction or something like that, go on a road trip, the road's closed, you change course and go a different way, or, oh my gosh, you know, the place that we were wanted to go to is closed, so let's just make the most of it and do something else, right? You're still going on vacation. <laughs> I'm saying all this because I just went uh, somewhere a couple weeks ago in the place, uh, this uh, kind of uh, oasis canyon that I was going to be hiking in was closed during the weekdays during the summer. So we went out to Joshua Tree instead. Okay, but look at that dimension in there. It's a little bit deeper space, right? You know, like that. Okay, but well, let's not stop there. Let's take that same black now, okay? And let's utilize this around that surrounding area, okay? When you take your surrounding area and you make it really dark, it makes anything that was in the interior there, or lighter than that black, it makes it look lighter by contrast, so even that super dark violet and Prussian blue that we used in there. I don't think I used Prussian blue. Let me get to that. I'll still get to that. I'm adding black down, but um, I love that Prussian blue. Let me add some of that too. But um, by adding this black on the perimeter like this, it will make some of those even really dark colors seem lighter. Um, in the end result, just because of the contrast and just how much darker, you know, something like black can be. Okay. Which way is up and which way is down? Who knows? It... <laughs> they almost have different personalities, the way you kind of do it, right? You know, the way you kind of flip it around. If I have, you know, I'm thinking about trees and bushes and stuff like that coming in, but I don't know, it almost, uh, I would say that it would work whichever way. Um, we need to do this in a live broadcast. So I, I did a couple live broadcasts way back when, but I haven't done them since. I kind of forgot how to do it, so need to do that sometimes, but that's one of those things where we can kind of take a vote, you know, and I'll say, who wants it 
this way and who I have. <laughs> Or first person to vote, you know, tells me which way is up and which way is down. And, you know, that chat message or whatever. That was kind of a cool way to work. The resolution isn't really great on those um, live broadcasts, though. Resolution of the video. Um, okay, so this is the Prussian blue being added in there. Um, and I do like to use the color that I stamped out my images in, in the toning process, be it, you know, whatever it is. Somewhere in that toning process, but... All right, there we go. Is it bright enough? It feels different, you know, the way I turn it. That way doesn't look so much to me. That I, I like that semi. It's like a little pillar of, kind of this crystalline thing. I like that. And I like this one too. This one almost feels like I have this upward kind of a, kind of a feeling like I'm going up there like that in this one in terms of the, uh, kind of the visual path my eye takes that way. A little bit more Prussian blue. Okay. Um, let me try. Let me try a little bit more of this magenta in here too. That magenta is really insane. God. That is really intense right there. How much further can we go with that magenta? Apparently quite a bit after I've laid even all that black down. I mean, it's kind of changing the uh, the spirit of that area with its intensity and depth see that right there in that glow that's kind of coming through there like so okay um when I start doing scenes like this and the, uh, the scene starts taking up a large percentage of the, uh, the, uh, the frame, I need to uh, alter my, uh, um, exposure of the camera. So let me, okay. It's a little bit darker and that's, meh, what I'm seeing on screen is pretty close to what I'm seeing right here in person. So hopefully that's it. But look at that. See those clouds up there and the depth in there? Hopefully it looks very celestial to you and kind of that evocative of a, oh, I don't know, kind of a deep space kind of wonderment. All right, now I think I'm ready for the um, um, splatter painting. I got my brand new bottle of bleed proof white ready here. There was still a little bit in my old bottle, but um, I, th I thought I was ready for a new one here. So look at that. It's super creamy and I don't know, just new. Okay. Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's really a, it's a favorite of, uh, you know, like calligraphers that are doing um, white on dark, you know, lettering. And it's because it's, it's just so opaque. And you can, by adding water, you can make it kind of any consistency you, that you want, you know, in terms of a, a little bit thicker, thinner, depending on, you know, a lot of people are using it in like brushes or dip pens and whatnot. I'm using it on a, a used toothbrush, you know, if you have an electric toothbrush, I don't know. I don't know if it'll work with something like that, you know, Sonicare or like an Oral-B like an old brush, but yeah, it might. 
Okay, so... Um, I want some on my brush, but I don't want... I don't want it, you know, totally sopping wet. Um, I do want some variation of sizes of these splatters that it's going to hopefully give me. But uh, I don't want a big glob to drip down on my paper. If it does, though, you know, you can kind of just mop it off. Even after it dries. But um, I'd rather not have to do that if I don't have to. Okay, so... Um, I would say this is probably about 8 inches or so that I'm going to start it out at. I really need my... Oh, okay, here's my scratch paper. Let me see what consistency I'm going to get here. Okay. Okay, see that? That's what we're going for right over this, over the top of that, so... I just wanted to see, sometimes I do this and it's like squirting over here, and sometimes I do it and it's like, you know, kind of going forward. I, I never know. All right, let me see if we can get in here and see what I'm doing. I highly recommend this process. <laughs> in terms of... Uh, I don't know, the fun, what's the word, quotient, or fun factor, whatever. It is really fun to do. If you do it a little bit higher, maybe, you know, the spray pattern gives them a little bit more spread out. And the drier it gets, kind of, it, it seems like it creates a kind of a finer mist spray. See that right there? I mean, that is really fun stuff. Sometimes they get a little drag, and I don't know, sometimes it's okay, but sometimes I don't like it. It doesn't happen too much because I get the consistency a little bit closer to what I'm kind of going for. Now, I've been, a lot of the, I, sometimes I hadn't done this for years and I'll do it. Okay, I'm going to go um, like this. I'm going to hold this up so I'm not going straight down. To, I need to. Uh, See if I can get a little bit of different patterning, maybe. I don't know, it looks, it looks kind of the same. <laughs> Let me try to... I'm going about an inch from it now, just to see if I can get a more condensed application in some areas. Okay, I, I don't know. I went crazy on there. Maybe I went too much, but who cares? It was a lot of fun. But anyways, now that's going to dry really quick. That's one thing about the bleed proof white. It now oh, see I got a big blob right there. I don't know where that came from. But watch this right here. Okay? You see what I'm talking about right there? You just take it like that and you just mop it right off. Or let's say, oh man, I you know, I got way too much you know, spray like right here. See those ones right there? I, I mean, I didn't. This is just making a point. Look at that. Is that? I mean, they buff right off. So, it's a completely forgiving thing. I wouldn't want to take it all off like an eraser if I didn't have to, you know. But we could. And you can even do it after it dries, like after a minute. It's real chalky, so I think that's the thing that makes it so um, bleed-proof. It's just, it dries really fast. It's really malleable, though. I mean, it's not drying so fast. It's not like drying on my brush right here. I mean, if I left that brush out for a half an hour, it's probably completely dry, but... Um, it's just fantastic. Uh, it's a fantastic medium uh, to work with. Okay, so I, I am taking off some of this in some of these areas, just to make it a little bit more... Uh, just so it's not so monotonous in terms of the amount of it here and there, okay? I went crazy. Well, a little bit crazy with it. Not too. Okay, so let's take a look at this right here. So that... Okay, I like it better with it, you know. I was saying I'm a little bit worried because I really like that background on there, but I don't know. Doesn't that look cool? Like that. I mean, it really, really looks celestial. Okay, now, um, 
I don't know if you can color uh, dark bleed proof white. I don't think you can. I don't, I, mean, I don't know if you kind of diluted it and added like some kind of dyed ink to it, maybe. I don't know. And, you know, and then splattered it down. But I'm just going to go on with some additional marks right here. We have white down there, right? And why not just, you know, utilize, you know, some gel pens for some different color marks. All right. Now, you, <laughs> one of the things about adding this down over the top of um, that Dr. Ryan's is sometimes, these are ball points, so sometimes when I start laying it down, like a, a piece of uh, that white goes into the pen, it kind of starts jamming it, which it did. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, just kind of be a little bit mindful of that. Don't go over like a white splatter. Okay, but anyways, this adds a little bit of that um, so these different tone dots in here, so they might represent like different colors of stars. You know how stars kind of burn you know, different color depending on their composition um, or what we see from it. Um, why not do that with gel pens? There's so many different colors of gel pens these days. Um, we can really take advantage of that. Um, I have a set of 180 color gel pens that work fine. I've had it for over a year now. It's, they're still working great. Um, this isn't from it. This is one of the uh, Uniball Signas, which are a little bit higher quality, well, a lot higher quality, right? And these work fine for me too, but um, having that 180 set, and I'll use some of those 180 sets with 180 refills that it came for for $25 was really quite a deal, I felt in metallics and glitter and whatnot. I mean, wouldn't that look really nice on here? Um, these are Sharpie paint pens, right? This one's, see this? This one's a pink rose. This one's more of the spirit of a traditional, like, paint pen. I have to whack it because I haven't used these for a while, but it has that inner kind of ball bearing thing moving around in there to mix the paint. I don't know if this is going to work or not, because I haven't used these. I can get it working, but I don't want to sit here and shake this for five minutes for the video. Okay. But these paint pens... Okay, I haven't shaken it up, uh, sh uh, shaken it up very much, but I can tell there's uh, the paint and binder ratio. I haven't sh you know, shook it up enough for that to become a little bit more pink. Okay, well, I'd need to shake it up a little bit more, but let's see if I can see this on here. These ones, well, oh, okay, actually, that looks really good. Um, so there's little white marks right down in there. You can kind of get um, with paint as opposed to gel. You can get a little bit more um, opacity from these type of paint pens. Okay. And if you have any, like, a white pen or a glitter pen, that would look really cool on here, I think. But see, I'm, you know, adding these little, you know, little embellishments to the piece, and I think it becomes a little bit more um, dimensional by having different colored dots. Let's see if we can kind of move into a, a shuttle art pen. Okay, now see this one right here. This is a shuttle art and there's a lot of different brands out there, but see how it has that glitter on the, the barrel? So this one's a pink glitter right here. And it's some little glitter things in the cap there, too. I don't use these too much, but um, I really do love using them when I do. Okay, let me kind of roll that off. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it too much on here, but... Uh, this down. I'm, I see it right here in front of me, but I don't know if I can kind of show it for the camera where it's going to see it. See that right there? Let me see if I... Oh, okay. Do you see how those, how those are glowing? Actually, you can see it really well. Those ones really come alive. See, it's invisible, but there's that light there catching that. I just did a little cluster of it right there. Okay, so let's add some more of that one. That one looks fantastic. And there's like, I don't know how many glitter pens there are. There's like 10, you know, 
or 12, I don't know, I don't think there's 20 glitter ones, but there's metallic, glitter, pastel, these multi-packs have, so I, I think there's some actual sets out there of gel pens these days, where it, the whole thing might be glitter, and you just get this big range of hue, values, um, I don't know if it's intensity of glitter, but uh, it might be. And we have the um, adult coloring book crowd to thank for that because these pens have been conceived for that market. And uh, I don't know, just a lot more people out there um, doing adult coloring than like stamping. I don't know if still, but um, you know, anytime you go into a bookstore and they're like, there's tons of uh, you know adult coloring books out there, you know, something's up with that. Okay, so here's um, fluorescent right here. Let's see if that... I, I never know if these things are going to show up on there or not. Again, I haven't used a lot of these before, so I've got to kind of get them flowing for the first time. But see, I mean, this is like a... This pack's like over a year old now, I think, at this point in time. And, you know, a couple wax and it gets it, you know, gets it flowing. These inks... Um, now, I said that the Uniball Signo is a little bit higher quality. It's because the real cheap pens in these sets, the inks are thinner, okay? Which can be a good thing because um, they don't clog up, I find, as much on me. I, I might have found one that I kind of had to replace, you know, but that 180 set came with 180 refills, so... Um, the inks are a little bit thinner, so they're not quite as opaque as, you know, some of the more expensive ones, which is understandable. So, pigment to uh, um, binder, you know, the ratio is, is less. So, like I said, these little marks that I'm putting down might be a little bit more um, translucent, see-through, okay? Not transparent, but translucent. But I'm fine with that at like 13 cents a pen or whatever that costs. But see these little ones are, see how that, that really kind of stand out in terms of intensity? You see that right there? And then, I mean, you could probably shine a black light and that would probably read. But this is like viewing this thing at normal distance, okay? It doesn't look so crazy, but then, you know, when you bring it up like that, you see all those different colored dots throughout that. And let's see if I can capture some of that. I don't even know where I put some of that glitter at this point in time, but um, you know, upon further inspection, it's really you get kind of a nice, really nice textural treat um, from these types of embellishments and. You know, those types of things are really fun to uh, to lay down in there. Um, let's, this camera's right right in front of my face. <laughs> if I tend to the corner of my table over here. All right, here's like a turquoise um, glitter pen right here. See that? Turquoise would be kind of nice in here. All right, I have I, this one's not flowing yet. I've never used a lot of these pens before. Okay, that one's... So... Okay, uh, this one's darker than I thought it would be. So I'll kind of put it in the same darkness area, but I'll just add it here and there within that blue. You can add it in the purple too, you know, if you want to. There's no rules here with this, you know, super textural kind of surface, but... You know, I mean, doing things like that, it's just a lot of fun. It'd be kind of fun if you had something like this and you did some kind of constellation of your made up of your initials or something like that in there, you know, something that only you would know maybe or whatnot. Okay, these, this is um, my Uniball white uh, pen, gel pen. So I like, see how it's all kind of a uniform texture in here, right, with those white little speckles. I mean, there's a little bit of variation, but watch this. When I go in here and I add 
a little bit of variation like this. See like those pieces like that? Those old balls. It just it adds some variation, okay? Where it's not just so monotonous in terms of that texture in here, okay? So that's where I like to go in and just add some of these right in there like that, okay? It breaks things up a little bit too, you know? You know, cluster them up a little bit here and there. You can put them right in here where there already is a lot of that texture in the design itself. See how I've designed these? And I have these reverse areas in here, okay? Of these little stars everywhere. Well, what I'm doing in here is I'm just going in, in it here and reiterating that so we have kind of those little textures down there that we stamped out, but now we're doing it again in this additive process. So you have some darker ones below because we've colored over them, but now you have some lighter ones above it. So when you do that, you create kind of space within that area. Okay, so I think that's about right. All right, now the question is, is what imagery are we going to use in here? I brought out a couple things. Um, this is the uh, the oak branch stamp. Let me zoom in here. I could go pines in there again. That would look pretty cool. But um, and I have this branch right here too, like that, kind of in a combination of it going around in here. I think that would be, I don't know, uh, the choices are, I wouldn't say they're endless, but uh, we do have a lot of choices just in terms of the combo. Oh, I like this stamp too. I don't lie, this is one of my favorite of the new stamps. It's just the, the leaves one. Okay, but I'm thinking maybe about three different types, just for some variation, okay? We have a fairly large space right here, and I'm glad I did it on the half page, just so I, I can have a few more options when it came to this, um, to make it nice and full. Okay, Versifying Black, for sure, more than the, uh, the Marvy Blacks or any kind of dye-based ink. We're gonna need something that can really lay across those little dots down there. Very small, you know, textures in terms of the uh, the bleed-proof white spattering and the um, the gel pen marks on here, but they're still raised a little bit. Okay, those do not penetrate the paper at all. So, you know, if I run my finger across there, it is textured. It's not like you know raised up a lot, but if I stamp dye basting into it like that and pull it off, chances are we're going to be able to see that white through that image. Pigment ink really is designed to lay on the surface, so um, just like the bleed proof white, so this will just give us a better chance of opacity is what I'm kind of getting at right here. I have no idea what's up and what's down. That looks okay to me. Hmm. Now that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that now. Before I... I like that too. Uh, I don't know. You know, this is my advice um, to people. If you just... If you're flipping it around you know, in terms of the positioning of some stamp or something like that. If you just can't tell where you want something to go, you know, putting your birds wherever you want. If nothing really stands out more than another, trust your instincts and just figure, okay, it doesn't really matter. You know, you don't have a real definitive, pro you know, uh, preference. But sometimes when you're kind of, you know, moving something around and something really sticks out to you, then you know, you know, then go ahead and stamp it there. But sometimes it's just can't really kind of th think about it logically. It just kind of has to hit you. 
All right, so there's my first thing like that. All right, we have a lot more impressions to go here because this one's kind of a, a circumference type of uh, application with the oak branch here. I've designed it, see where it's a little bit heavier right here and lighter right here because I, I hardly ever stamp the whole thing like that. It's mostly just using certain portions. Do you want a lighter application of it where you can see more in the background or do you want a heavier application to go you know, to be a, a bolder statement in a given area. So you can just kind of twirl it around and kind of, you know, figure out what you want as well. Kind of ink up more than you think you'll need because you never know, you know. You know, I'm saying that because if I know I'm going to stamp out that much, probably. And if I just ink up that much, sometimes I move it in there a little bit more than I, you know, I'm missing, you know, a certain portion of it on the uh, scene. Okay, see it down here? See how beautifully that just kind of applies right over the top of everything. And I'm looking at it here close up. I don't see any white showing through, you know, those areas. It's showing in between, you know, the, the branches and whatnot, but not... Um, through the impression of it. All right. I have some other trees that I'll be using in here too, but uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Let me just use a smaller portion of it this time. So we can go for that variation. Got to be real careful about the handling of this piece now that I've stamped out the, uh, you know, I'm stamping out these um, branches on here because, um, those branches will stay wet for you know a certain period of time and it doesn't dry dry quite so fast even though you know it says instant dry pigmenting that they mean instant dry on matte paper not on glossy so on glossy it takes a little bit more time but it does dry though um, something like a uh, like a clear snap um, color box black ink would not dry on there very fast at all okay so this one's the versifying I'd, I don't know I recommend it um, for your uh, you know your your supplies I, d I just think it works really fantastic Okay, so I used a lot of that oak branch. Um, let's see in here, do I... Let's get in some different shapes in here. This could represent, you know, the same type of branch, but it just, maybe it's closer to us, you know, because it, you can see more of the leaf shape, you know, from it. So... Maybe it's just something, but it's a little bit closer to us. I don't know. See that right there? It kind of just blends in, you know, with the other branch. <laughs> now, in this case, I always have it kind of going in because, you know, this is like one of those kind of perspectives like you know we're laying on the ground or something like that and kind of looking up through the uh the trees and whatnot into the into the uh the sky
Okay, I think I'm going to leave this area right here open. I, I like this configuration. I th ah, let me test it again. Okay, now that way was looking kind of like top and bottom to me before, but now it isn't. This way looks okay. I, I like it like this. I like it tall, I think. All right, so maybe all that will kind of uh, adjust my usage of, you know, kind of my, my finishing, I don't know, foreground branches maybe. Yeah, that provided a nice contrast, huh? That branch next to the, uh, the more foliated branches. Foliated? Is that a word? Okay. I think this scene is going to look really great um, sprayed with a, a clear spray. The ones that have a lot of uh, super intense layered colors tend to uh, really benefit from uh, a clear coating because it makes everything a little bit more saturated and um, layered. All right, here we go, like that. And let's leave that next one out. I think that looks good. The thing to me that I'm kind of contemplating right now and what I'm thinking about is um, the possibility of uh, some sort of a uh, thing in the sky. I think a, a bird would look pretty cool up there. Um, right in here. Um, I think two, maybe. I just happen to have them out on my desk. I, I guess I kept them out from... Uh, that soaring in blue scene from a week or two ago. All right, this is the, uh, the flock. And I'm doing this in the Versafine as well. I'm just going to do it dark. Light even pressure. <laughs> Don't squash this into your scene and get kind of a blob, you know, from pressing too hard on them. But light even pressure, you know, you want to get a full impression of it. Okay. And I'm going to put the smaller one up, kind of like a little bit higher, but maybe I'll turn them a little bit. It's kind of like they're, you know, flying up to the heavens or whatnot. All right, let's take a look at those right there. I don't know if people will see them immediately because it's... You know, it's just so textured in here, but um, I don't know. Let's take a look at this from the top down. See, it's like deep impressions. Look how dark that Versafine is, huh? <laughs> I mean, this background was really dark, but you put that Versafine over it, and suddenly that sky doesn't look quite as dark as it used to, huh? Because you just have, you can put like true black right next to it. And it just doesn't look quite uh, as dark. And again, by contrast. Right. right. I'm just looking at, see, I mean, I have those birds kind of going in a certain direction, which I think would kind of represent top and bottom now. But uh, it really could have gone whichever way you want. Personal preference, I guess. I don't know. This one kind of stood out to me a little bit more. I'd say, 
you know, 50% or something like that. The other, divide up the other kind of configurations, you know, with that remaining. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe that was 60% to me. And take 40% between the three other, you know, top to bottoms. Oh, that looked okay too. Okay, so a really textured piece right here. Um, boy. All right, one more thing. I mean, this is really textured, so we might as well go all out on here. Okay, you've seen me use the, uh, the pigment ink, okay? Just using the Hero Hues Unicorn White. Just your standard white pigment ink, okay? Um, it doesn't dry as fast as Brilliance. I'd recommend using, you know, um, something other than Brilliance if you have it, okay? But... Oh, I have a little bit of blue on here. Let me go with this. Take your Q-tip or whatever, cotton swab, and really just kind of loosen it up like this. Okay. I'm kind of working it back and forth. And I'm trying to get this tip right here nice and kind of unwound, I guess, you know. Kind of pull it up a little bit. Don't come do it too rough because you don't want it completely unraveled. Okay, yeah, that's what you want. You want a little bit of give right there, okay? All right. And let's take this and get some ink on there. I, I, now I put quite a bit of ink on here because I know I have to smash this down anyway, but see, that's that's just way too much ink right there, okay? Let's use this side so you can see. I'm really blotting this out a lot, okay? And in doing so, I'm kind of smashing the tip down a little bit too. It's kind of flattening it a little bit. Now watch this. See that one tap right there? You can barely see it, right? That's what you want. That's 10 right there, which is much lighter than the first tap when it was first applied, okay? Now let's take a look right here. I need to adjust this again. I've gotten a lot darker and my camera's showing the scene lighter than it uh, is, oh yeah, it's a little bit better, a little bit darker looking scene, huh? Okay, so, on the, you know, these largest of little stars um, that we've established, those ones were with the, uh, the gel pen. I don't know, maybe when you splatter, you know, if you get a little bit more varied um, dots than I did, then maybe you wouldn't have to draw those ones in, but I like to, you know, I just in the, you know, theory, maybe these are the largest and brightest stars, so I can put a little bit of this kind of more kind of glowing haze around it like that. And it just adds that looks a lot different than the surrounding dots, doesn't it? So see I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get rid of that monotony again by adding this little bit of variation here and there. It looks like it's glowing to me. I always like it you know, my pieces to look like the light is coming from within the scene. Now we have it in really t small little elements in here this time, but look at this one right here in the, the cloud. I mean, that is really fun, isn't it? But see how it, lightly it is um, stamped, uh, tapped out? It's not a big blob of ink, so we want to see that crisp little dot underneath there, but kind of just this diffusion around it. So that's why you really have to take off a lot of ink. Um, I do this too. I, I sometimes I just have too much ink on there. But now, if you're if you're going with a, a pigment ink, just like that, you know, the bleed proof white. If you get too much of that ink on there, you know this pigment ink, you can just buff it right off and it'll come right off, okay? That being said, it's not so fragile. If I touch it, you know, it's gone or something like that, but, you know, you can remove it if you if you add too much down there. A lot of times I'm tapping it down like this, and then I'll go like this with my finger and just remove a little bit of it. Sometimes I put on too much. See those little areas right there? Doesn't it look like it's, oops. Doesn't it look like it's really glowing there? See those little stars? Can you tell which ones I've kind of done that with? Here, 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 here. Well, I've kind of told you now, but, you know, this is looking at it from, you know, standard viewing distance. So, I mean, that 
those little things like that, you can tell. I mean, these ones, like that one really stands out now, right? But look how subtle it is. It's not a big blob of paint. It's just, you know, a Q-tip, little dab worth right around it. And that suddenly becomes really quite... Um, it's like a little, I don't know, you know, little whatever Tinkerbell, you know, within your scene or something like that. You know, this little glowing little living thing, you know. See that one right there? Let's see. See how that look, that star just looked just like that one before. I don't do it to all of them because the whole idea is, you know, to kind of create you know, some variation, and if I did it to every single one of them, you know, there goes the variation, but, um, you know, you can just kind of add it down, you know, maybe that one I can do a little bit of a glow like that, and, you know, tap less or something, I don't know. All right, now, now it's looking a little bit better to me, it's like these little jewels, you know, throughout the piece, um, in various little areas, various I don't know, brightnesses or something like that, you know, the stars and whatnot. Okay, so anyway, there we have it. Uh, I'll have to take a look at that, um, kind of the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the not the reference scene, but the um, inspiration, the inspiration scene, again. And this will look nothing like it, but, uh, you know, that's kind of my version uh, from the inspiration um, piece. It, it, it was kind of a composite. It looks like a photograph, but there's no way that it is. <laughs> but it was really cool. It's some kind of composite, you know, showing some deep space ones. But I don't know. That's my version of it, and I love doing this type of thing. I'm always working in these scenes that kind of often um, include sky background, like a real distant mountain or something like that, mid-ground, which might be the uh, subject matter, and then I put things in the foreground. Well, this just kind of removes a lot of that area, and suddenly you have foreground, you know, in the form of all these kind of silhouette um, foliage shapes in here, and then you have what they would call in, in photography, infinity. You know, it's things beyond a certain point, and especially including something like sky. So we've really pushed the depth in here. I, you know, the birds are representative of a, another layer of imagery, I guess you can say. Maybe the clouds, you know, technically would be something really close, but we're really talking about something just really close, and everything else is really far away. And those are really fun kind of dynamics to play around with. And then when you're talking about things like kind of deep space imagery, nebula, stars, and whatnot. In terms of the color schemes you can do, or you're allowed to do, and how you're doing it, really anything goes. And that's, you know, that's, that's for sure, because there's all kinds of different, um, you know, things out there in space in terms of the imagery and, uh, you know, gases and things like that, you know, different planets or, you know, their, their compositions and whatnot. So, but you can really just do anything. This would look really fantastic, I think, in like deep emerald greens and things like that and yellows and really super bright neon green. Uh, Nebula, you know, gas, gas, uh, glowing gases and whatnot, and things like that. Something like this might be really cool. And you've seen people do this in, um, uh, what's that type of ink, you know, that you do those kind of, you know, background little swirshes and, you know, there's really cool kind of separations. Ah, I just can't remember it right now. You can post it down in the comments below, but I think you know what I'm talking about. They, they do those kind of amorphic backgrounds, which really make some great backgrounds for things like scenes and things like that, and I love those types of looks, so. Anyway, fun stuff. Play around with it. Really layer your inks, you know, and have a great time doing that. When you think you've gone just about as far as you can go with a certain ink, try more of it, you know, layer it down again right over the top of it, even after it dries or whatnot, and see if you can get kind of a more intense, kind of glowing look and uh, deep look to your colors and whatnot. And then, um, like I was saying before when I was doing it, um, I really recommend, you know, a jar of this. It's not very expensive or whatnot. And something like this, 
I don't use it a lot, and I just use it in that little splatter painting. It was a few drops on this right here. So this b type of bottle right here lasts me, it lasts me a, a decades, okay, you know. And like I said, I don't use it all the time, but um, I don't know. I, I think I just got through a bottle that I was using um, when I was in college, so um, it really lasts a good you know, amount of time. And then, I don't know, splatter paint it and whatnot. This splatter painting looks great for skies. It looks great in, like, um, for specular light on a water surface, like in an ocean or something like that, or where you have some crashing waves. I love to use it at the base of waterfalls, where you have that churning water and that water you know, getting kicked up. So I have to go really close to my paper when I do that, it's just so it doesn't give me you know, you know, a wide spray, you know, doing it like up here, like if it's targeting like a spray, you know, like an area under the waterfalls and whatnot. But it just works for um, some really great texture. I mean, I think that little splatter thing like that, if you did it around something like um, a word stamp or something like that, you know, if you put some color around it or something like that and stamp that word stamp out, or you did the splatter painting behind it, wouldn't it have like this kind of real festive look like it's, you know, you get this kind of exploding um, type of a color, uh, color scheme around it, and I think that would be really fun to do. So all kinds of different usages um, of it. Okay, so anyways, if you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, hope you uh, like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, drop me a note anytime.